Advanced Authoring Format, AAF, is a file format for professional cross-platform data interchange and is now being standardized through the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, or SIMPTI. Now you know what SIMPTI stands for. Hi, I'm John Tendy. Welcome back. While AAF is designed for video post-production and authoring environment, becoming familiar with advanced authoring format enabled us to make good use of it in an audio environment as well. In parts one, two, and three of this series, we opened up a Pro Tools session in Studio One for Mix. We edited and sound designed for Picture in Persona Studio One and then imported the sound effects with their labels to their proper location in Premiere Pro. But there are software specific settings that you need to go by. Some support embedded audio, some don't. Some support stereo, some support split. Some drag and drop and some don't. And Pro Tools, well, we'll get into that in a minute. So I spent uh, pretty much three full days exporting every permutation of AAF, embedded, non-embedded, 16, 24, 44, 1, 48, stereo, split, etc. into Studio One, Premiere Pro, and Pro Tools to see which are the proper export options depending on which workstation you'll be importing them into. And I made a chart, not a very good one, but I made a chart that hopefully will save you some time and frustration as you become familiar with AAF and add it to your workflow. So let's get right to it and make things as quick as possible. I'm not gonna do this in real time, we'd be here all day. So I'll just show you the Studio One and Pro Tools export dialog boxes, they're similar. So the export options are similar as well. Okay, so here's a handy little export chart. These are the settings that are compatible. In other words, whatever is checked off is what is compatible for import into Studio One, Pro Tools, etc. And here is our export AAF dialog box in Studio One. So let's look at the compatibility chart as we prepare to export an AAF from Studio One, which will then be opened in Pro Tools. So on the left, let's look at our chart going down the Pro Tools line from the top. Embedded files are supported, non-embedded files are supported, 16-bit is supported. Pro Tools does not support 24-bit AAF files. Why? I don't know. If you look at some of the Avid discussion groups, people have been screaming about this for a long, long time. It will only support the import of 16-bit. So because of that, let's go to the right and look at our dialog box where it says convert audio files. Make sure your resolution is set to 16-bit. AIF uh, wave is fine. Sample rate 48, you can also do 44.1. And as it says on the chart, you can do rates that are higher than that. Just make sure you know what hardware other members of your team are using so you know what sample rates are supported. Uh, stereo is not supported on imports of Pro Tools. It will not support the import of an AAF stereo file. It's gotta be split mono. Okay, so let's go back to the dialog box. Trim audio files, I generally do that if there are not crossfades, and again, I avoid crossfades. If you don't have to do it, don't do it. It's just more data and occasionally more frustration. Export pan, if they're mono files, yes, the pan data will cross over. If they are stereo files, when those stereo files are split, one is gonna be hard left and the other is gonna be hard right. So exporting pan won't make a difference. Legacy mode, you should be using up-to-date software. I'm gonna leave that unchecked. Now let's look at the chart as we prepare to export an AAF from Studio One, which will then be imported into Premiere Pro. So going down the third column, when importing an AAF into Premiere Pro, embedded files are not supported, has to be non-embedded. 16-bit is supported, 24-bit is supported, 44.1, 48K and higher rates are supported as well, uh, as well as AIF and WAVE, no problems there. Moving down to stereo. Stereo is not supported per se. That's why there's an asterisk there. If you saw the other video, you can import a stereo AAF into Premiere. Only one side of that stereo image will appear in your sequence. It will be a mono track. So obviously, if track by track you have stereo images, you're going to have to split mono. Now, as far as compatibility when importing AAF files into Studio One, there's really nothing to discuss. It's compatible with everything, whether the file is embedded, non-embedded, 16-bit, 24, 44, 1, 48, higher rates as well, uh, AIF, Wave, Stereo, Split Mono. It's probably the most AAF-friendly audio workstation out there. So if your AAF is coming from Pro Tools to be open to Studio One, there's really nothing to worry about. Just keep one thing in mind, Pro Tools exports selected tracks. In other words, it will not export the whole session. You have to choose which tracks are going to be part of that AAF. That is actually a feature I like. That can be very handy for quick fixes. 
Now, there are sometimes quirks when crossing platforms or when working in an inter-application environment, but the few minutes of head scratching, assuming you follow the proper export protocol, is a small price to pay when you factor in the hours you'll save by not having to write down time code offsets, searching for slate cues, renaming audio files, etc. But by not becoming familiar with and not practicing AAF export and import, you can make some serious and sometimes embarrassing mistakes. Embarrassing because if you are on a team project and a sound effect, an important one, 35 minutes in, is off by three frames. Here comes the group email with a dozen other people carbon copied. You really don't want that to happen. In the next and final part of this series, I'll show you how to set up your Faderport 8 to act as a Surface controller in Premiere Pro. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, and don't forget to check out Tendi Media on Facebook for more videos and live music performances. I'm John Tendi. Thank you for watching.